Hello, Yellow Room friends. This is a beautiful spring day outside. I hope you're all getting a chance to enjoy it. Snoopy and Skye were super excited to see all the flowers outside. They wanted to bring some inside. Here's a tulip and here is a rose. They're excited about all the different signs of spring. There's tree, uh, leaves growing on the trees and flowers growing and birds are chirping. I think some of you have seen some nests that you've shared with our friends. So we're gonna sing our hello song and then we're gonna do some spring things. Sing some songs, do some crafts. Okay, you ready guys? Here we go. Hello, hello, hello and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. And I hope that you are too. En español. Hola, hola, hola. ¿Y cómo estás? Muy bien, muy bien. Y es better que tú también. Snoopy's here today. And Sky is here today. Let's give a cheer for Mary's here. And my yellow room friends are all here today. All right, before we get started with any crafts and things, I'm going to sing you a new spring song that I learned. And maybe you can learn it at home too. All right, here it goes. Spring is here, spring is here. Goodbye snow, flowers grow. Birds and bees, leaves on trees. Hello spring, hello spring. That song just makes me happy because I love springtime. All right, let's see if you can learn it. We'll sing it one more time. Here we go. Spring is here, spring is here. Goodbye snow, flowers grow. Birds and bees, leaves on trees. Hello spring, hello spring. Okay, like I said, I've been walking around outside and noticing that there's leaves growing on trees and all kinds of flowers growing and bugs crawling around. Those are surely signs of spring. I thought it'd be fun to make a tree with green leaves. Now you know I love to use old things in my house. So you can use an old toilet paper tube for this one and an old box that I have. And you could probably find one in your house too. If you don't have these things, especially the cardboard, you could use paper for this too. But I think it's a little easier to use cardboard because it's more stiff. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do with your cardboard tube is cut little slits in it like this. One here and then right across, right there. Not all the way down, but just like that. Can you see that? So one on each side. And then you can take a piece of cardboard box. I cut it into a little smaller piece and then make the top big round part of the tree. If this is too tricky for you, maybe someone at your house can help you, but it doesn't have to look perfect because trees are all different shapes and sizes. These branches coming out from all different places. Okay, so you just cut a piece like this. That kind of looks like a tree top and then you can put it right in here now. And there's your tree, like that. But now we wanna put some green leaves on there, don't we? So I thought it would be fun. Another thing I found in my house is a cork from an old bottle, a cork came out of it. And this is kind of a good tool for stamping. We've used this before. And then I needed green paint, but you know what? I didn't have green paint, but I do have blue paint and yellow paint. And I'm gonna show you, some of you might already know this, what happens when you mix the blue and the yellow together. So I'm gonna take a little blue paint, put it on my plate. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow paint, put it on my plate and stir it around. I think I might need a little more yellow. And look what happened. I got green. So blue and yellow mixed together makes green. Okay. So now you can take your cork. It might be easier actually to take the top of your tree out while you're working on this. Take the cork and dip it in the paint and then just stamp on the leaves. Now remember, when you're stamping, you just wanna push down, pick up, push down, pick up. You could move it around if you want to, but I think it looks more, I like the design better when you stamp it. So all around. You can see the leaves on the tree. You can make one tree. You can make a whole forest of trees. And then you put it back in here. And there you have it, a little tree. I'll put that by Snoopy and Sky. See if they want to hold that by their flowers. Okay. All right, another thing we can do to make some signs of spring is we can make some tulips. Now, what you're going to need is a piece of white paper and this is kind of silly, 
a fork, a plastic fork, or even a metal fork that you have at your house, and a little green paper, because we're gonna make some tulips that look kind of like this. And this is gonna be the stem. And this, we're gonna use this fork to make the top of the tulip. Now you can see on a tulip, it almost has a little jaggedy edge on top. This is a very big tulip that I found outside. Some are a little smaller than that. So the first step is decide what color tulip you wanna make. I think I'm going to make a red tulip. So I'm gonna take a little red paint, which I do have, and I'm gonna put it on my plate right next to my green paint like this. And I already have my fork, and I'm gonna show you how it looks when you stamp it. Okay, here we go, you ready? I'm gonna stamp, do you see that? I'll show you even closer, like that. You can see the little tines of the fork. And then add a little more paint and stamp. And you can do all different colors if you want. You can do red tulips and yellow tulips and purple tulips and pink tulips, whatever color you want. And then after you've stamped this, you're gonna make some stems. So I have some green paper at my house. And then just wanna cut a straight line because you can see from this tulip, I'll show you. Actually, the stem is very nice and straight. This tulip doesn't even have any leaves on this part, but you could make some leaves. Okay, cut, cut, cut. And cut a skinny stem, and cut a wide stem. And then, I think most of you have a glue stick at your house. You could use other kind of glue, too, that comes in a bottle. And just make one straight line under the tulips, like doot, 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 all the way down, where you're going to put the stem. And then, I'm going to glue my stems on like this. I think I need one more for my third tulip. And you could even, if you'd like to, you can paint a sun on your picture, or you could even make some grass with your green paper for my tulips. And if you wanna make grass, you could even just cut little tiny pieces, shorter pieces with your green paper. I know you guys are getting very good at snipping with scissors. And you can just snip, 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 snip. Put some glue underneath your Tulips. I'm going to show you how our, I'm going to do it, but you can do it any way you want to. Grass down here. Okay. And there you go. And there, you can make tulips like that. You can make little stems on there too, if you, I mean, leaves on there if you'd like to too. So we can make trees, you can make leaves, I mean, tulips with all the things that you have at your house already. Okay, now I'm gonna move my art stuff aside and I'm gonna sing another silly song. Let me get the rest of my supplies here. Where are my numbers? I cut out some numbers for this one. Let me see, where are my numbers? Numbers, where are you? Okay, there, silly me. Okay, you know, some of you are starting to chew bubble gum. I love bubble gum, and I happen to have a piece right in my pocket. I'm gonna take it out and chew it. You have to be careful with bubble gum though, not to swallow it. And the thing about bubble gum is it's really sticky. So I'm gonna put some in my mouth. Mmm, I love bubble gum. It's also really fun to blow bubbles with bubble gum. So here's how our song goes. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky bubble gum. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky bubble gum. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky bubble gum. Let's blow a bubble. Oh no, and pop! Oh no, it stuck to my hair. Oh my goodness, I have to pull it off. All right, you guys need to think of a number, Snoopy and Sky, between one and five. You tell me what number and I'll see, I'll count to that number and try and pull it out. What do you think, Sky? Five? Okay, here's number five. Here's five, are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I got it. Okay, put back in my mouth. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky bubble gum. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky bubble gum. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky bubble gum. All right, I'm gonna blow another bubble. Oh no. 
stuck to my cheeks. Uh-oh, I'm gonna have to pull it off. All right, guys, give me a number, another number. What do you say, Snoopy? Four, okay, here's number four. Here's four, right, let's count to four. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, pop, oh, I got it off. Oh, yuck, let's wipe it off. Oh, clean it off a little bit. Get back in your mouth and chew it up. All right, icky, sticky, icky, sticky, bubble gum. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky, bubble gum. Icky, sticky, icky, sticky, bubble gum. All right, I'm gonna blow another bubble. You ready? I'm gonna do a really big one. Look how big it is. Ah! Pop, oh no, guess what? It's stuck to my shirt. Uh-oh. All right, one more time. Give me another number and I'll count and try and pull it off. Two, okay, let's hold up number two. Here's number two. Are you ready? One, two, ah, oh, I got it. All right, you know what? I'm gonna take this gum, roll it back up into a ball, put in a little baggie, put in my pocket for next time. It's just too sticky. Okay, thanks guys for helping me count. Okay. All right, I remember telling you that I was gonna read the last story in the Harry the Dirty Dog book, remember? We read the one how he gets really dirty, and then I read the one where he's wearing a the sweater made out of roses that he didn't really like, that Grandma got for him. And now I'm gonna read Harry by the Sea. That's the third story in this book. All right, and remember, the author is Jean Zion. That's the person who wrote the words, and the illustrator, the person who drew the pictures, is Margaret Bloy Graham. Okay, let's find the last story that we didn't read. Okay, that's Silly Harry. Okay, it's called Harry by the Sea. I thought we could read this because it's hopefully time that we can maybe go to the beach a little bit soon. We'll see if we'll get to go to the beach. Okay, Harry was a white dog with black spots who liked everything about the seashore except the hot sun. One day when the sun was hotter than ever, Harry looked for a shady place to sit. But when he tried to get under the family's beach umbrella, it was too crowded and the family made him leave. They're saying, get out, Harry. There's not enough room for you under here. When he crawled into the children's sand castle, there he is, the walls fell in and the children chased him away. They said, ah, oh, Harry. When he walked in the shade that a big woman made, She became angry and made him stop following her. She said, hey, get away from me, you dog. Get lost. She was very annoyed. Oh, poor Harry. He just wants to get out of the sun, right? The sun was very hot and Harry had walked a long way from the main beach. He was tired, so he sat down at the water's edge and all of a sudden, a big wave came from behind and crashed right on top of him. When the wave rolled back, Harry was left floating in the water. He was completely covered with seaweed. He didn't look like a dog anymore. He looked like something from the bottom of the sea. Look at that silly Harry. Suddenly, a lady saw him floating toward her. Help, help, she shrieked. It's a sea monster. The lifeguard heard her and blew his whistle. Everybody out, he shouted. Everybody out of the water. They thought Harry was not a dog, but a crazy sea creature. Everyone ran out of the water and so did Harry. He was still covered with cold, wet seaweed. It made him feel cool and comfortable and now he didn't mind the sun at all. He felt so good he started running back to his family. On, the, on his way, some people saw him. Oh, it's a sea serpent, one of them screamed. It's a giant sandworm, shrieked another. Harry had water in his ears and could hardly hear them. He just kept running and running toward the main beach. Okay, let's see what happens. When he got there, Harry stopped and stared. Instead of just his family's umbrella, oh no, now there were hundreds of them and they were all striped just like his family's and he couldn't tell one umbrella from the other. Suddenly, two beach attendants saw him. Oh my goodness, one of them gasped. What's that? It's a bushy backed sea slug, exclaimed the other. They whispered for a moment and then they ran. Look at all those umbrellas. Harry doesn't know which one is his family's. Oh no. Harry went from umbrella to umbrella, but he couldn't find his family. Everyone wore sun hats and sunglasses, and everyone used suntan oil, just like his family. Harry looked and sniffed very hard, but it was no use. He couldn't tell one family from another. 
Suddenly, the two beach attendants came running back carrying a big trash basket. They ran toward Harry. Stand back, one of them said to the crowd. We're going to catch it and take it to the aquarium, said the other. Oh, no. They think Harry came out of the sea. Then they tiptoed right up behind Harry and raised the trash basket over his head. Harry didn't know the beach attendants were behind him and he was listening to something. He thought he heard someone calling his name. There it was again. Harry, Harry, Harry. Now Harry was sure. He didn't wait another second. Just as the basket came down, he ran. He ran right out from under the basket. It happened so fast the beach attendants just stood there with their mouths wide open like, oh. As he raced through the crowd, some people screamed, some people ran, and some people did both. But Harry paid no attention. He kept on running across the beach. There he is. There's Harry. When he got to the hot dog stand, he stopped and barked happily. Behind the counter, the hot dog man was shouting. It was his voice that Harry had heard, but Harry had water in his ears and he couldn't hear very well. The man wasn't shouting, Harry, Harry, Harry. He was shouting, hurry, 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 get them while they're hot. Harry still thought the man was calling his name. He barked and jumped with joy. He jumped so much that suddenly, all the seaweed fell off of him. When the crowd saw that Harry was a dog, they gasped. <gasps> they could hardly believe their eyes. All at once, Harry began to jump higher than ever. He saw the children, they were running toward him. Oh, Harry, they cried. We heard you bark, we've been looking all over for you. Harry was so happy that he did a little dance. The hot dog man was so grateful to Harry for bringing the crowd to his stand that he sold all the hot dogs he had. He even gave Harry a free hamburger. The lady who told Harry to get lost came along and bought him a cold drink. You're no sea monster, she said. You're just a lost hot dog. Everyone laughed except the two children. He's not lost, one of them said. He's Harry and he's ours. And then they hurried off to join the rest of the family. The next time Harry's family went to the beach, they brought a new umbrella. Harry liked this one very much. It was white with black spots. No matter how crowded the beach became, it was easy to find. But best of all, it was big. And when the sun got very hot, there was room underneath for all of them. That's a good ending. Now they can all fit under the umbrella and Harry will never forget which one is his umbrella. The end. Okay, so we read all of these books. Remember, we read Harry the Dirty Dog, No Roses for Harry, and Harry by the Sea. I should say all these stories in this one big book. All right. Okay, friends, I think we're gonna sing our goodbye song, but you know what? Our little piggy wanted to come out. He's been missing you, right, piggy? Oh, piggy. Oh my goodness, piggy's so excited. Oh, there's your friend Sky and Scoopy. Oh my goodness. You wanna sing a little song first? You wanna give them a hug? Okay. Willoughby, wallaby, why? A little piggy gave a hug to Sky. Oh, I love you, Sky. Willoughby, wallaby, whoopy. A little piggy gave a hug to Snoopy. I love you, Snoopy. Willoughby, wallaby, wary. Oh, I get a hug too. A little piggy hugged his friend Mary. Oh, piggy, you're so soft and cuddly. Okay, how about your yellow room friends? Willoughby, wallaby, well, you friends. A little piggy hugged all the yellow room friends. I'm giving you a hug. Oh, I love you. Okay, yellow room friends, I miss you. I hope to see you soon. All right, let's sing our goodbye song all together. You ready? Goodbye, Snoopy. Goodbye, Sky. Goodbye, Piggy. And goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, yellow room friends. Goodbye, all my cherry preschool friends. We hope you had a happy time, happy time, happy time. We hope you had a happy time. I had a great time too. Okay, friends, happy spring. I love you and I miss you. Bye.